This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by NYSE Governance Services, Corporate Board Member, along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to This Week in the Boardroom. I'm Scott Cutler, Executive Vice President and Head of Global Listings at the NYSE. And today we're here to talk about shareholder activism. And with me today uh, as our guest is Bill Anderson. Uh, many of you may know Bill. Uh, Bill is a Managing Director, a partner at Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. and is in the business group preparing companies for and responding to activists, mm -hmm. former lawyer, mm -hmm. former accountant, uh, former Army officer as well. Uh, Bill, you've seen the gamut uh, of everything. Yep. But you know, today's topic, it's, it, it's so interesting mm -hmm. because if you look at the newspaper every single day, mm -hmm. it seems that uh, companies are just facing uh, mm -hmm. these issues of shareholders really being actively engaged. Mm -hmm. It's an investment thesis. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's driving companies to respond in different ways. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the overall investment or you know, the environment for mm -hmm. shareholder activism today? Yeah, uh, we've been doing this over 10 years, working with companies on defending against activists. And I have never seen an environment more vibrant. And it looks like it's permanent. And there's a few reasons driving that. First is the amount of capital in this space. Now you've got about $120 billion of assets under management. It's really an asset class. People invest in this. It's created alpha. They've had returns that have exceeded hedge fund returns the last two years, exceeding general investment returns. And so if you're a, a institutional money manager and you have an activist in your stock, you may be open to the fact that they're in the stock because they could help your returns for that quarter. So again, a lot of capital in the space. And if you think it's 120 billion-ish of assets under management, you add leverage to that, that's a lot of purchasing power. That translates into more campaigns. So the number of campaigns is about triple from where it was a few years ago. The number of positions, we track activist positions and every quarter there's this obscure filing called 13Fs right. where they have to disclose, every shareholder has to disclose their positions if you over, own over 100 million. About 450 new and increased positions and so a lot of companies have an activist investor. But this phenomenon doesn't happen without the current environment. Uh, low interest rates are, very, are driving this to some extent and a number of companies that are trading below the sum of the parts, so there's a perceived opportunity uh, in that front. I think the last force that's driving it is that institutional money managers are more open to listening to the activists, hearing out their arguments. Maybe not always uh, supporting them, but they can't win, if you will, with 5% of the stock. They need the other shareholders. And it's tough being a board member, and how do you react to that environment? Right. Well, it's, it's been interesting. We've, we've been talking about the challenges that companies have in terms of understanding who their shareholder base, yeah. um, what, what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But now you see a lot of directors actually engaging mm -hmm. with shareholders yeah. um, on a governance call, the fifth call, some right. people have called it. Uh, what sort of risks does that introduce into the mix? Look, I think directors, we're seeing more of it for sure, and we yeah. think that will continue. It's risky for directors, and a couple of reasons. One, Reg FD. You don't know the sort of the guidelines the way the CEOs who are and CFOs who are playing day to day. Um, there's a risk that there's a perception that the shareholders may see that you as a director have a different view than the management team, and that there, there's always going to be issues around that. I think the third issue is that frankly the shareholders may think you may not know enough about the business, and that may not be great. But what kind of engagement do we see? Certainly in any proxy fight, most shareholders expect to see a director as part of that discussion when you visit ISS. Um, in compensation discussions, the comp committee chairs are often you know, talking with the corporate governance groups of these key shareholders. And now we're starting to see roadshows, if you will, where lead directors go visit shareholders. The best time to do that is in the fall. You can't do this now because every institutional money manager is taking 30 Sam pay calls an hour. Right. Um, but in the fall, and, and just saying, okay, here's how we think about our board. Here's how we think about our governance issues. And that, that fully directs, that's becoming more common. It's not quite the norm. I think we'll see more of it, though. Yeah, so with this asset class, so to speak, mm -hmm. rising and the performance being what it is, mm -hmm. 
and, and I agree with you, the trend mm -hmm. feels as though this is here to stay. Mm -hmm. How has this changed what's happening at the board level? Look, I think you're seeing more companies proactively doing diagnostics on themselves to see if they're vulnerable. There's usually seven or eight screens they look at. They look at performance. How have we done on a one, three, and five year total share return basis? That's important because, well, sometimes the activists will say you've done poorly for two years and three months. They'll jigger the charts around. But look, one, three, and five year, a lot of shareholders look at and maybe CEO tenure. So that's one metric. Capital structure. Have you returned capital versus your peers? Um, research community. If the research analysts are critical and, and people look at that, because research often sells to at hedge funds activists, there may be signs that there may be activity around that. Break up. You know, is there opportunity to monetize assets and M and A? You know, can you sell yourself or LBO? So, put yourself through a number of screens. Take a look at how your shareholder base is moving. Is it moving away from? Are some of your good shareholders selling down? Um, your takeover defenses. You should know some of them are not as popular with shareholders. Some of them will give you time, and you got to know how to articulate why you might need them if you keep them. And then governance. And governance is certainly some people keep an eye on governance scores, but Shareholders are more focused on how, how engaged is the board. Board tenure has become a bigger topic. And just being able to say the board's involved, and that's why I think some lead directors are, are uh, out there. I remember a proxy fight we led, a famous one years ago, and, and one thing that companies don't like to do is talk about their wins because then the access will come back after right. them. Um, but we were taking the, the directors out in the road, and the shareholders didn't know who the directors were. And one was the CEO of one of the biggest banks in the country. One was the head of a private equity firm. And, and some of these people may not be familiar if they're not in your sector. And so introducing the board becomes very important um, in proxy fights because it's often a, a referendum on the board. Interesting. Well, you, 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 uh, you identified a couple of things that you might look at. Mm -hmm. But as you're preparing companies mm -hmm. well in advance to think about sure. this environment, mm -hmm. what are the key things that uh, activists are going to look are going to look at that puts a company on the radar screen and then mm -hmm. how is it that a company should be preparing itself to mm -hmm. either avoid being on the radar mm -hmm. or being able to address some of the issues or concerns that may come out mm -hmm. um, you know if you've got uh, some of those issues that, that that come up so if you're an activist they tend to have more concentrated positions they may be in five ten fifteen positions so they've got a lot of focus on making sure those positions have good returns because sometimes you invest in a company that's undervalued and there's a reason that it's undervalued. It doesn't, you know, it's just not doing well. Right. Um, they're looking for outsized returns. How do you get outsized returns? Well, it could be, uh, and it's typically recently breaking up the company. The idea you break it up and then you can sell the pieces. So I think being mindful of the fact that is there a potential perception that you have a breakup opportunity? Return of capital. Now you're five years after the crisis. Now maybe you can put leverage on and repurchase sh shares or, or pay a dividend. Uh, and then will they be sold? So what do you do if you know those are the criteria? I think one thing that companies need to do proactively, and they're doing this more often, is that you're running your business. You want to be successful. You want to beat your competitors. You're making sure all your businesses are doing well. I think what the activists are, are pushing a little bit is, well, look at your portfolio, too. And, and if someone says to you, you should break up the company, and you say, look, we're doing really well. Why would we do that? Well, I think boards nowadays are also saying, well, why? If we want to keep it together, how do we keep it together? How do we articulate that? How do we tell the shareholders beforehand? What are the synergies? What are the, how, do we, how does this business mix work? And you want to lay the groundwork for that long before the activist comes in. I think that's a big change. Oh, so, so that's all the preparation side. Mm -hmm. what, what happens when an activist actually gets involved? Mm -hmm. you know, when, when do you get involved? What, what typically is mm -hmm. your role yep. in responding to that activist? Yeah, a lot of the, the work we do is, is the prep work and having the, the response ready to go. I think once an event happens, I think companies that are well prepared will have a, you know, a, a strong legal team and PR and proxy solicitors as folks who have very good expertise in these areas. Um, and you get together and you really want to have that plan ready to roll out when the event happens because you can say publicly we'd like to study the issue, and you should. But you have to have a point of view, because if it's something that people say it's obvious that you should be considering, then they're going to want to say, well, what do you think about it? You may want to look at this a little bit further. So our role often is, is, is coordinator. It's sort of helping right. all the messaging 
uh, go out. And we know shareholders very well. I mean, through the capital markets, and we, we know how shareholders feel and from the experience of having defended companies. Making sure that they don't take it personally, because a lot of the activists can be very personal. And that's, they try to you know, get people to, to get into fights, and that's not been perfect. Um, but I do think it's the, the companies that have been successful. I mean, what's I mean, another thing that's different is they're going after the actors and going after some very good companies, and saying you're a great operator, but we th we can help you on breaking it up or we can help you on returning capital, and so even the, the better companies are now saying, hey, we better be prepared for this. So what changes do you see coming down the road mm -hmm. as you look at the trends today mm -hmm. and you uh, yep. see the storm clouds on the horizon? Yep. What do you say to the public company director turning mm -hmm. in today to mm -hmm. Yep. The, the issues that they ought to be concerned about looking ahead. Yeah, I think this is a permanent phenomenon, as I said before, and just recognize we're seeing more um, almost lieutenants of some of the activists forming their own funds, so you're seeing a prolifer proliferation of this. You're also seeing the index funds and some of the other funds willing to be more proactive, positively, sometimes critically, but you're seeing more investors more actively engaged with companies long before activists come in. I think you directors should also look and amongst themselves and say who's going to be the person who's going to be talking to shareholders, the lead directors, the compensation committee members. They're going to have a more active role. And again, the, this point, and you can't, it sounds like motherhood and apple pie, but this whole thing of taking a hard look in the mirror and then if you want to keep the way you are, that's fine. I mean, that's, boards are paid to lead the strategy, to lead the company. But you may want to think about, well, if the market doesn't see why we're doing this, how do we get in front of this? And so this more proactive messaging has is, is become more and more important. And as board members, we're seeing it. Uh, we're going to continue to have to do it better because I think shareholders are demanding it. Well, one last very quick question. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that we see in terms of the current market mm -hmm. structure, uh, the ownership provisions, yep. the, the the length of time that it takes for institutions to report their positions, mm -hmm. is a general lack of understanding as mm -hmm. to who your shareholders right. are at any given time, yep. and actually then looking forward, who are the shareholders that you ought to be engaging mm -hmm. with? Mm -hmm. any, any quick uh, thought on that? That's a great question because, yeah. for example, if you're a, a company and you see, for example, quant funds, you call the quant fund, you get Siri answering the phone. There's no one <laughs> home, right? Like, there's not, so you, it's tough for shareholders because you tell the directors to go s see shareholders, and sometimes the, the shareholders are very busy. They say, we don't need to talk to you, and right. it's, it's somewhat frustrating. So here's a, you, you really should break it down. And so, for example, the retail shareholders are very tough to get to, and that often can be a, a big group of the shareholder base, but if there's any way to get to them better. I think index funds and a more governancy funds, it's a different type of approach. You n definitely need to articulate your business message, but they're also going to be focusing on, you know, the long-term in nature. They want to make sure the board's thinking about governance issues in the way of a long-term focus, and compensation is important too. Um, there'll be a few fulcrum shareholders, the big money managers, the smart money, where an ISS or maybe other institutions may even look to them and say, I wonder how they're thinking about it. And it wouldn't be surprising if the activists called them up. So making sure you have the maybe your, out of your top 10, there's maybe four or five that are active money managers will we'll have a lot of sway over how others vote. This is an informal network where, right, where they right. share to speak to each other. But it is tough because you've got quant funds, you've got all these other funds, who, shareholders who may not be interested. And so directors are in a tough spot sometimes on that. Well, thank you so much for your insight. Thank I you, mean, this is, this is a topic that we're hearing about every single mm -hmm. day, and it's really great to get your perspective right. because I think a lot of companies are struggling with how to, the re how to respond, how yep. to be organized, and quite frankly, how to be pre prepared in advance of mm -hmm. these things uh, happening. Because as you say, mm -hmm. we're in a new world and this mm -hmm. is, uh, is going to be part of it. Well, I think one of the things you'll see, Scott, is more companies are telling investors how well they're doing. I think in the past, you, you're trying to keep a low profile. You want shareholders to understand we're doing pretty well. So if someone comes out publicly and says that you're not, you've kind of laid the messaging of your positive results and whatnot, and I think you're seeing more of that. Great. Well, thank you again for tuning in to uh, this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. We hope you'll tune in again as we cover another important topic to make you a more effective board member or committee chair. Thank you. Thank you. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by NYSE Governance Services Corporate Board Member along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton. 
and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.